In this segment, we're going to talk about how to change out a uh, GC column. Now, this doesn't make a difference whether you have a GC 2014, as we do here, a GC 2010, uh, a GC 17. It doesn't make a difference. The technique is the same. Okay? First thing to do is back out of the software again. Cool the instrument down. Turn off your gases. And then you can turn the instrument off as it is right now in this state. Okay? Next thing we're going to do, you'll want to have the 10 millimeter wrench and a 6 millimeter wrench. Take the 10 millimeter wrench, loosen up the nuts, which holds the injector side. Okay, it is slotted, so it allows it to come down. Kind of clip that there. We'll do the same thing on the detector side. Never try this if the detector or the injector are hot. You could actually bond the metal together or score the metal so where the fittings will not screw into here anymore. Once I pull everything out of there, you just pull everything straight down like I showed in the column. Pull it straight down, clip it on there, the column can be easily removed. You're going to want to take one of the nuts, okay, now with the new column, you're not going to have these ferrules on there, okay. These ferrules are something that we're going to talk about adding on here. With an existing column, if you simply want to cut off an end, the procedure is exactly the same. So for the sake of training right now, I'm going to take these ferrules off. All right. This is how a column is going to look when you get it. First thing you want to do is kind of fish some of this column out by pulling on it so that you have enough to work with. Once it's installed, you don't want to have any pressure pulling down on it, so you want to give yourself plenty of room to work without having to worry about the column binding up on you. And there's a number of ways you can do that. Okay. Now cutting the column, this is something that everybody dreads, but it's not really difficult, it just takes a little practice. What you're going to want to do that is take a ceramic wafer or another GC capillary cutting device that you can purchase through um, ourselves or Shimatsu or another vendor. The technique for cutting the column is not difficult and we're going to go over that in just a moment. First let's talk about the ferrules. Let's talk about the ferrules. This column happens to be a little bit larger diameter than what you're going to see on most applications. But that's okay. The principle is exactly the same. The package of ferrules. What you're going to get is something that looks like this. It's serrated. And when you open these up, you're going to get a small ferrule that comes out of here. It has a small piece of tubing through it. As you can see, that bar just simply keeps that opening free and clear so that you can put it on the column. The top part is tapered and that's raw graphite. On the bottom there's a ferrule which gets compressed up inside the ferrule and that actually compresses the graphite against the column to make the seal. For you. To take this off, you just tap that a couple times on a hard surface and pull that right out. You're left with something that looks like that. Okay, next we take the column and this side, on a brand new column, it doesn't make a difference what side's the injector side, which side's the detector side. 
we're using a pre-existing column here. We're going to uh, say, for example, we want to just cut off part of the column because it may be getting old and we need to replace it. You take your ferrule. And I'm going to simply thread it through the hole and push it down. Now when you slide the graphite ferrule onto the column, you can have a little bit of the graphite get into the tip of the column, so you're going to want to cut that off. You're going to have two separate jigs on your instrument. In this particular one, it has a split split injector with an FID detector. You'll see an S etched on here. That's for split splitless. It's a shorter jig. The second one, this has an FID, and you can see that it's longer. It'll have an F4 etched on it for this particular instrument because it's a 2014. If you had a GC17A, you would have simply an F on it. But it would be longer such as this. Okay, so since we're working on the injector side, I'm going to slide that ferrule, excuse me, the uh, jig on. And that fits. What this is doing, this is replicating the injection port fitting. It fits right on top of that. You take the nut from inside of the column and you screw that in. We take the 10 millimeter wrench, and we hold this, and then we take a 6 millimeter wrench and you gently tighten the nut and progressively tighten the uh, the ferrule. What we're looking for is we need to completely make a gas tight connection of the graphite to the column itself. So once that's a little tight, I'm going to back it back off again. Keep in mind, you want some of this column protruding out the top here. Okay, I take that off, pull that up. What I'm looking for is that should be tight. Okay, when I move that with my finger, that is too loose. So once again, it's just a matter of trial and error. I'm going to put it on there. And I probably won't cut that much off the column, so I'll pull that down a little bit. I'm going to tighten it a little bit more. Do not want to crank on this. I'm going to loosen it up again. Take it off. There we go. Now if I were to gently pull on that with my fingers, that ferrule is not moving now. That's sealed. You can see at the very top here, that is sealed around that column. Something else to note, very important. You do not want to tighten this ferrule down to the point that you lose the space in between the plunger end and the top of the ferrule itself. I think of it as a, uh, looks like a command capsule from the old Apollo series. All right, there's the top of it, there's the bottom. Once that squishes together, you lose the capability of being able to cinch around the column. That causes leaks. Okay, now that I have that tight, now in any case, keep in mind, if I were really to pull on this, I'm going to move it. But I'm tugging on it and it's not moving, so that's good for our purposes. I'm putting the nut on there. This time, I'm not going to tighten it down. I'm just screwing it in there to give me a length. Now we're going to cut the column. In this particular case, we have a wafer. The wafer has two sides, a printed side and a non-printed side. If you take your fingernail and rub it on the very edge of this wafer, you can tell it is serrated. You'll feel like bump on this side. If I turn it over, it's very smooth. You want to use the serrated edge to cut. That is your cutting. Think of it as a sharp knife cutting something. The technique for this is very easy. I lay it in my fingers like this. And I'm going to take the written side or the serrated side and I'm going to lay it parallel to my column and to my jig. The object is I'm simply going to 
rub this across with a little bit of light pressure. I'm going to score the outside polymer of this column. The inside is glass. Once I score the polymer and etch the glass, it'll simply fall off. We're looking for a straight, clean cut. So once again, I put the edge of the column, the wafer, and I'm going to just simply rub it across and break it free. Now, I'm even with the top. I'm taking off the ferrule, excuse me, the jig and the nut. And now it is cut to the correct length for the injection port. Same technique applies then for the FID side, the detector side. I'm going to take a, another ferrule. Remember, tap that out. Slide this on. Take my jig, my nut. I'm going to tighten that down a little bit and push my column through just a little bit. And I'm going to tighten this down again. There is no set number of turns that I can tell you to make this cinch. It's basically a trial and error. Remember, we just want it so that the ferrule does not move up and down the column freely. Okay, this time I got it first try. Putting it back on once again. Not so this tight, but just to give me the right length. Once again, print it side, lay it in my finger, lay that to the very top of the jig, and I'm going to put a light pressure, slide it across, break it off. If you don't get it the first time, that's fine. Go over it again and break it clean. I'm going to remove this, and there's my detector side. I still have a little gap in there, so that's what I want. I don't want it butted up tight. Okay. Okay, now that we have our ferrules attached, I can place the column in here. And it doesn't make a difference which side you want to start from. I have the detector side in my hand right now, and we can tell because it is longer in this case. I'm going to simply go into the port, and I'm going to feed that up, just like that. I'm going to hold it in place. I'm going to take the nut that we are actually using when we use the jigs, slide that on, being careful not to catch the column on the little notch there because you can break the column. I'm going to go finger tight initially and then one quarter turn. Same procedure for the detector side, excuse me, the injector side. Feed that up. Take the nut. Finger tight, quarter turn. And if you can, it's important to keep the column so that it's not bouncing against any of the side of the column. You don't want it hitting the side of the instrument at all. And eventually with vibration, that could cause a wear in the column and cause it to break or cause a hole which causes the leak. That's it for replacing the column. The column's in there. If it's a new column, and even if it's an older column, I'm going to want to bake this out. And by baking it out, I will go ahead and set my GC up, let it run, but I'm going to increase my oven temperature to approximately 20 to 30 degrees less than what is marked on the package of the column for the maximum temperature 
each column box will tell you the maximum temperature that this column can sustain. Drop your temperature of the oven down to anywhere, I actually anyway, 20 to 40 degrees will be just fine. And let that go for three to eight hours, depending on that if you want to run it over a night or so, that's fine. Always make sure though that you have column flow going through the column, which will be your makeup gas. That is very important to remember. Once you're done baking the column out, return the oven to your operating conditions and go ahead and run your samples or your standards. And that's it.